On this episode of Fresh Vintage Garage, we're checking out the Top Don Car Pal. And while this is in beta test right now, we wanted to dig into the software and show you all the features and capabilities of this unit so that when it comes out for public sale and release, you can make the informed decision of whether it's worth your hard earned money. Let's get started right now. So to get started here, this is part of Top Don's test light program. And big shout out to them for sending this over and effectively sponsoring this video. Test Light is their beta program. And what this is, is they send this to early adopters, so to speak. We get our hands on it, other people get their hands on it, and you can actually help them finalize the software. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna go plug into my car, we have a check engine light on, and that data feeds back through the app on my phone to actually help them finalize this before they do a full public release for sale. Uh, wanted to mention that this is, and the TopScan Pro, these are Bluetooth units. They need an app on your phone to function. Forgive me if you already know this, but uh, the RD Diag, by comparison, this is an actual wired unit. This plugs in via cable to your OBD2 connector. The RD Diag 900 Lite, that is a wireless Bluetooth unit. It actually has a VCI that looks similar to the TopScan Pro here. And if you haven't seen the videos on these, if you're thinking about buying one of these, we have a video on each of these. We'll leave in the description of the video you're watching now. But like I mentioned, this is in beta, and it does have an app with it. Uh, on my Pixel 6a, just mentioning, it'll run on most any Android-based phone. Uh, we also found it on the iOS App Store. Jay found it on his iPhone. And there is the app there right now. So what we're going to do is a few things. We're just going to unbox this. I'll literally unzip zoop, this thing, pull it right now. Then we're going to go outside, and my... CRV actually has a check engine light on. So we're gonna go see what's going on with that. I think I know what it is, but we also wanna actually get this unboxed and then go see the actual software capabilities of the CarPal unit. So that's everything in the box there. There's normally not much in here. We have a user's manual and here is our CarPal. Has a similar look and feel to the top scan. I won't pull this out of the box, but if you've not seen our video, definitely go check it out on this guy. But it's it's kind of like almost the next generation here. And the software that we've seen so far, just to shout it out, we'll throw some screen grabs up on the screen here now, but there's actually a heads up display. It'll show you like your speedometer and your miles per hour and stuff. There's also uh, OBD2 connectivity as well, but there's also oil light reset, parking brake reset. So a lot of cool features in this software. Let's go ahead and jump outside and we'll plug into my car and see what all is going on in here. So we are in my 2005 Honda CRV, and you can see we have the actual connection up here. This is the VCI connection. All this says is it's connected to the actual Bluetooth uh, dongle, the CarPal unit itself in the OBD2 port. I'm going to just make sure I intentionally disconnected it. I'm gonna reconnect it and it'll take 10 seconds or something. And then uh, there we go. There we go, so now it is connected. And I'm just gonna jump right into it because there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but I'm gonna do full vehicle health check and we'll speed this part up in the video, but uh, we'll actually show you, it says one to three minutes. We tried this off camera, it took 45 seconds a minute or something like that. So it's going relatively fast, but we'll just let it, uh, I'll stop talking and we'll speed this part up. So looking at the screen here, we see installation reminder. It says no Wi-Fi detected. I am gonna just use my 5G. It's downloading Honda diagnostic software, which, uh, you know, big props to T-Mobile there because it just downloaded about 100 megabytes very quickly. And it actually auto vins so that's awesome to see. It is auto vinning on the screen there. We'll just let this run and see what comes back. It says it's reading the VIN, so we'll just uh, let it read the VIN. Okay, so there is our VIN, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit confirm. It took about 20, 30 seconds to read the VIN. And let's jump into the United States. So we have USA CRV 05 CRV, that makes sense. That sounds correct. All right, so looking at the screen here, we have auto scan and vehicle profile. If I hit auto scan, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna to do top to bottom scan. So I wanna start with vehicle profile. I just wanna see what's in here. So, okay, that is the year, make and model of the vehicle. That makes sense. Let's hit auto scan and let's see what is in here. There's a lot of stuff. So we have everything on the screen from 
PGM FI, so that's pretty common fuel injection type uh, setup on most you know American cars, so to speak. Automatic transmission, so it's basically showing a breakdown of what's in the vehicle. It says I have a parking brake, which uh, electronic parking brake, which I guarantee I do not. The parking brake is right there, uh, but it says I have electronic power steering, which is kind of news to me. So that might be some beta test stuff going on here, but uh, kind of need to see everything that's in here. Let me hit scan. I'm going to hit scan and right now we're just going through everything it's actually going through fairly quickly so we'll speed this part up and uh, we'll just zip through the rest of these to see what uh, what all it comes back with so overall that took about three minutes maybe three and a half minutes give or take but you're seeing the health check the full vehicle health check i got an 83 so i'm kind of getting a b minus in high school kind of thing so i'm a little concerned by this but uh, we're going to jump into the actual um, two faults and the other fault showing on the screen here to see what's going on with each one so looking at the screen here i have an 83 i have two fault codes uh in the fuel injection systems this p0420 I'm honestly not super surprised to see these. I was kind of wondering if my catalytic converter was on the way out. Not excited to say that because it's probably a couple hundred dollar proposition, but this is kind of reinforcement and confirmation of that. Uh, I have a fault code in my airbag system, so let's see what this says. Uh, short in passenger airbag cutoff indicator. So probably something under the passenger seat. Maybe there's something going on in the actual computer system for the airbag, but I, I definitely need to look at that as well. Uh, the rest of this stuff, I just wanted to scroll over and show you. There's a show all button in the bottom right here. Um, if you have a newer vehicle, this is an 05 CRV, so it doesn't have integrated motor assist, or it actually doesn't have TPMS, believe it or not, um, but it definitely doesn't have drive by wire. So you start thinking, I got a 2020, a 2022 something, whatever vehicle it is. There's a lot of stuff in here, everything from adaptive cruise control to multi view camera system, blind spot information, so on. There's a lot of tech and stuff that they're packing into a very small what feels like a consumer you know diy grade product uh really really good value they're providing here from top down uh, let's jump out of here i'm going to go back to the main screen and forgive me i'm just going to click a few get back here there we go so i see an 83 now at the top of my screen let's try and do a data stream let's see what kind of data streaming we can do with this and it's going to communicate with the car We'll give it a moment to do that. Okay, so here is our real-time data reading. I'm very curious to see if we can find data graphing in here. I'm kind of wondering if it'll do it, but uh, you can see our engine coolant temperature is 168 degrees. Uh, vehicle speed center uh, sensor, sorry, we're obviously going zero miles an hour because so we're not moving. Throttle position sensor, I'm a little concerned to see that that's saying 17.6% right now because the engine's not even on. But uh, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Let me just start the CRV here. And let's take a look and see what new information we see. So there was a little bit of a lag, but we did see engine RPM. My coolant just changed, it changed again there. Okay, so we have our air intake temperature. I'm gonna hit the gas and see if the throttle position changes a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna hit the gas. Okay, it did change. Let me hit it a little bit longer. Okay, so it did go up to 17, not 16%. I'm a little surprised to see that sitting at 14% right now, but um, I thought it would be a little bit more reactive. There's relative throttle position. Let's give that one a shot here. That one changes, okay. So a lot of data in here, everything from intake manifold, absolute pressure. We're getting O2 readings. I wanna see if any of these will actually do a graph. Let's take a look and see. Okay, so here's a display. Let me save. Okay, awesome. Okay, so here's our data graphing, really cool to see. Let me see if I can actually throw some other data graphing on here. So it looks like I just come and choose most everything that I want. Oh, now that's interesting. So if you look at the screen, you see it'll actually give you as much data graphing as you want. And let me try this one here. This is a actual like a speedometer almost. So there's our throttle. So now we can sit here and rev it up like we've got a tachometer. That's pretty cool. 
really neat to see that this is all in the app because it's saving these defaults. It's actually showing the, the graphing engine RPM, and then it's showing the throttle position sensor as or position as a gauge. So if I want to jump back to a graph, I can go right into the graph there. And really neat to see the live data here, quite a bit of capability. If you're looking to dig into why something is not working, maybe a sensor is starting to go wonky. Uh, let me turn the car off here and I'll turn it right back on. Forgive the beeping. Let me jump out of here and we'll go back to, we wait for this to exit the data stream. Okay, now we're back to the uh, home screen here. Just wanted to shout out the test light program. I won't show up for but, you know, a few seconds, but here's the test light program. This is kind of the backside for beta testing. It's almost like a mini social media space for the actual beta testing. And uh, this is where we're actually feeding the data back into Top Don so that they can finish this product to get it ready for a full public uh, release and sale. We have the ability to do a battery test. So let's do a battery test. We're gonna start testing and turn off all systems. So I'm gonna click, okay, turn off the headlights, air conditioners, blah, 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 so I did all that. Uh, step one, turn off all systems, uh, start the vehicle. So if this is anything like, okay, so it gave me immediate results. Battery test results are normal. I didn't know that it would actually do, I thought it might would might possibly would do a uh, like a load test to see if I turn everything on, like the blower motor and the headlights and stuff, but that looks like uh, all you get. So kind of a simple battery tester, but it does give you the option to do that. Let's look under the maintenance and I am readiness, and forgive me for the beeping, I just turned the car off and back on. So here's our oil, throttle, electronic parking lake, lake, wow, sorry, electronic parking brake, battery management system, TPMS and so on, diesel particulate filter. So kind of neat, neat to see because some of the mid-range, lower end mid-range scan tools that we've seen, they don't actually have this in uh, their, their actual software. So kind of a nice feature to see there. So we jumped in the car, went down to a local uh, college that has a nice big parking lot. So we're on private property kind of thing. And real quick, wanted to show you earlier in the video, you saw I am readiness at the bottom center of the screen, but this is the I am readiness uh, actual check if you have emissions in your area and they actually pay attention to that stuff. You can see we got a big old fail on here simply because of the uh, catalytic converter and uh, the check engine light being on in general. But you can see all the stuff that it checked down at the bottom. And we wanna jump out of this and go into the actual performance test and the heads up display. Let me show you the heads up display here real quick. Both of these will give you the ability to, let me choose the top one there because that one's actually a little cooler. And uh, we'll turn that sideways on the screen so that it's horizontal so you can see it. But this isn't doing a whole lot other than literally giving you, zero, you know, miles per hour and your actual, uh, you know, RPM. So we'll let this finish up here and connect to the car and then I'll jump in the drive and we'll drive down here and show you this in action. And stay tuned because there's a performance test coming up. We want to explain what it is and how you can use it and what vehicles you can use it for. So we are good to go. So there's my actual tachometer. It's pretty much live. So I'm not going to go crazy fast. I'm just going to throw this in drive and uh, get on it for a second. Here we go. And there we go. Just like that. Pretty quick and easy. Nice and fast. Very responsive, you can see. Let me just put it in neutral here and hit the, uh, the the gas. You can see how fast the actual tachometer is, but let us get set up for the performance test. We are here with the performance test now, and you can see where it says, warning, do not do this on highways. That's why we came to the parking lot. Don't be out hot rodding. Uh, it's not a good idea when you're uh, using this performance test. Do it on private property, preferably someone's own property. So. But uh, here's our performance test, and you can see it's reading a protocol. What this is doing is it's getting ready to uh, check your horsepower, your torque, and your actual speed, miles per hour, and your actual engine RPMs all at the same time. So you can see it's live now. So I'm just going to set this on the dash, and I'm going to pull over here. Bear with me while I get around. You can see it's already showing miles per hour. And I'll do what I would call a, uh, a little pull. It's not gonna be anything crazy here, but. So I'm going to stop. And here we go, three, two, one. And 
and there's 20 miles per hour. I'll just stop there because we're in this parking lot near cars, but you can see the actual test says it completed. Current test data is invalid and tap start to restart the test. I'm going to swing around here and we'll do one more quick hit the gas. So let me just drive over here and we'll do test again. Okay, so I'm going to come to a complete stop, and there we go, and test again. Okay, so hand here, and hand on the phone so it doesn't fall on the floor. There we go, and I'm going to come to a complete stop. So it kind of gives you a breakdown of the performance test here. So a quick note on this performance test, this is a 2005 CRV. Uh, I make that note because we've had intermittent issues with not uh, just this software, but um, knowing this is in beta test, but we've had other different vendors, manufacturers, they have the same issues. Um, for some reason, the data getting put out by this year making model. We also have a friend with an 05 Mustang. Um, they've had issues with the horsepower and torque you should be seeing the horsepower and torque on the you know the outside of the actual tachometer. Um, we did get it to work, I believe, in Jay's Forester, but that's a 2016. So take all this with a grain of salt. If you buy this car pal solely for the performance test, uh, depending on what your make and model you have, you may be disappointed. But uh, it's kind of a nice little feature, a fun thing to have. But uh, we found it to be a little finicky if we were going to call out one like we don't you know like this kind of thing with the overall car pal unit. So one other quick thing as we wrap up the video here, and we'll throw the screenshot of this up so you're not seeing reflections, but in the service section, we were just at the home, but the service section has data trouble repair guide, TSBs, tech service bulletins, data link location where the actual OBD2 connector port is on your year make and model, and the warning light library. So if you're not sure what that light means on your dash, this is a great way to check it out. This looks and feels kind of like consumer DIY geared, like all the software is geared towards like your everyday Joe, so to speak, which isn't a bad thing. This feels like a really, really solid tool for a DIYer or a consumer who's looking to take their diagnostics and their, you know, their actual repair of their car to the next level versus just kind of taking it to a friend and having them get the code, so to speak, the OBD2 code. But I could also see a shop having a second or third, this is like their backup scan tool. Have You have a customer come in and they're looking to saying, hey, I got my light on, I have no idea what's going on. This will help give a quick push button. Well, you have this code or that thing going on or this doesn't look right. So uh, really impressed with the actual beta test software. Let me grab this thing out of the OBD2 port here. Really impressed with the overall beta test of the Top Don CarPal. Uh, really solid unit. It feels very polished. We've definitely dealt with uh, much buggier software in some other beta test products from other brands. Um, but uh, Top Don really has a solid unit here. We'll leave the link for this in the description of the video you're watching now. So when this comes out for public you know, release for sale, it, we can make the informed decision if you want to buy one and pick one up. Uh, really solid unit. It feels durable. Uh, we didn't show the lights on here, but when it actually connects to the car, it's green. And then when it connects to the phone via Bluetooth, that green light turns blue. So kind of a nice visual there to show you that the car is actually communicating and the phone's communicating with the actual car pal. Uh, wrapping up the video, definitely recommend this. Uh, I would say uh, check it out when it comes out for public release and uh, sale. But with that, if you like uh, shop equipment, if you like scan tools, if you like keeping your cars fixed up and on the road and certified fresh, Fresh Vintage Garage is your channel. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.